Namo namaha, swagatam sarvebhyaha. So let's begin now our journey through these 10 different classes of verbs, the 10 different ganas of the present system, by looking at what are this group that's known as the a ganas, right? The classes where we are going to add a class marker uh, to form our stem, which somehow, in some way, involves the letter a, the a gara. Uh, as we form the stem from our verb root, from our dhatu. Uh, these are, these aganas are characterized by having just one stem that's used everywhere in the system, uh, re regardless of atmani pada, parasmai pada, and they don't have a strong or weak alternation that we find. Uh, the, but we will find that alternation in the non-aganas. The aganas are classes 1, 4, 6, and 10. Uh, let's look at them first, uh, then we'll turn to the non-aganas in subsequent segments. So let's start with class 1, which is called the bhūgana in Sanskrit, uh, because it's uh, exemplified by the root bhū to become uh, as the kind of founding member of the class. So if you can remember that bhū turns into bhavati, uh, this will help you remember how the other verbs in this class are formed, how the stems are formed. Uh, the rule of uh, how to form the class 1 verb stem is fairly simple. First, you start with the verb root, the dhatu. Right? Remember, all verb roots are going to be one syllable exactly, uh, and they're going to look like either just a vowel, a consonant and a vowel, a consonant, vowel, consonant, uh, as, as a cluster. So you can either have a V, a, a, v, a CV, a VC, or a CVC uh, form for a dhatu. To make a stem, you take that root and you gunate the vowel that you find in the root. Then you add the ogara after the root, uh, and voila, you have yourself your stem. That's it. You gunate the root and you add the gana marker a. Uh. So uh, here's a very simple example, the root wad, to speak or say. The guna of a uh in wad is going to be a, uh, right? So the gunated form of the root stays wad, no change. Uh, then you add an a, uh, and so your stem is now wada, and that's it. And then you're going to add your personal endings. Uh, wad is a root that takes the parasmaipada endings. So we'll get for the third person singular, we're going to get wadati. She, he, or it speaks. Saha wadati, sa wadati, tat wadati. The dual is simple, wadataha. The two of them speak. Then for the plural, notice something interesting is going to happen here. You're going to have wada plus your ending anti. But instead of a sandhi here turning into a, the a uh is going to drop and you just get wadanti. This is a characteristic you're going to have throughout all of your conjugations. The a uh of anti never will sandhi with the a uh of the stem. It's going to drop and it's just going to be wadanti. The second person is straightforward. Wadasi, wadata, wadata. Uh, the first person, the uttama purusha, again, you have to pay attention. Here, the, there's going to be an augmentation of the a. Uh, the a uh is going to elongate and become a. Ah. So we get wadami, I speak. Wadawaha, we too speak. And wadamaha, we all speak three or more. This ami, awaha, amaha is going to be found in all of our agana classes, 1, 4, 6, and 10, but it won't be found in the non aganas. You won't get that amaha, that kind of thing. So that's wadati. There are many, many other first class roots that we're going to find in the language uh, where we have, uh, there's many of them have the consonant plus a plus consonant, tiaj, meaning to abandon or quit or give up something, will become tiaja as the stem. Uh, and then this gets conjugated as tiajati, saha tiajati, tiajasi, tiajanti, uh, that sort of thing. There, let's look at a couple more regular con conjugations. The root smr, which means to remember, this will turn into smara in the stem, right? Because the guna of r is ar, right? And, the, uh, uh, and so it becomes smar, and then you add your a uh, gana marker, this, uh, and the stem becomes smara, smarami, I remember, smaramaha, we remember. The Atmadepada side, we can look at the verb vrut, which means to exist or occur. This will first gunate and become vart, right? And then you add an a, to your marker a, to form your stem varta. To that stem, now you're going to add your uh, Atmanepada regular endings, and you come up with tat vartate, that happens, right? Or that exists, that occurs. Te vartante, they exist, they occur. Tuam vartase, you exist. 
Aham Varte, I exist. One thing we should mention here is that there are situations when the guna rule is going to get blocked. It's not going to happen, the guna. This will either be when the roots, either, either the root ends in a consonant cluster or the root has a long vowel which is followed by a consonant. In either situation, there's going to be no vowel gunation that happens to the stem. One example you'll note is the root jiv, which means to live. Jiv doesn't gunate, it doesn't become jiv. And you simply add the gana marker a, uh, and you get jiwa. That's your stem, jiwa, jiwa ti. Or if you have the root nind, which means to criticize or condemn or denounce, the short i doesn't gunate, doesn't become named. Uh, the stem just becomes ninda, giving us nindati he or she criticizes or condemns. So in other situations, uh, we'll have some interesting internal sandhi situations that'll happen after you gunate the root and you add your uh, uh, stem, uh, your marker. This is going to be uh, different from your external vowel sandhi that we've looked at before, so it's worth paying attention here. The verb ni, for example, the root ni means to lead, and we'll see here that the long e will gunate to ne. Um, and then the A plus A uh is going to meld into Aya. This is an internal Sandhi rule, and it's different from the external Sandhi of A plus A, uh, which would have turned into A plus Abhagraha. Uh, here, in, instead of that, first the A is going to be broken into A uh plus E, and then you add the A, uh, then there's a kind of redistribution that happens. The E turns into a semi-vowel like it would with external Sandhi, and so we get A uh plus Y. Uh, the yakara plus a. Uh, so combining those, the stem becomes naya. Uh, and so we get nayati, she, he, or it leads. Or nayasi or nayami, I lead. With the long a uh, now that's appearing in the first person endings. Bhu, to become, to be, is going to work in the same way. Bhu first gunates to bo. Uh, but then the o is broken down into a uh plus u. Uh, the u flips to the semi-vowel wa. Uh, since it's coming before the vowel a, uh, and so we get b plus w plus uh, the a, uh, which becomes bhava. So the root bhu becomes the stem bhava, and then you add your parasmai pada endings, sa bhavati, she exists, tau bhavataha, the two of them exist or become, te bhavanti, the three or more of them become something. Uh, so there are lots and lots of class 1 verbs like this. After you see uh, how these stems form a few times, you'll have no trouble at all recognizing them. Uh, it's really fairly straightforward. There are a few that are irregular though, and we should take care to remember them right off the bat. One of them is the root gum, which means, which means to go, and which has an irregular stem, gacha. We already know it, right? Sa gachati, she goes. Te gachanti, they go. Aham gachami, I go. We already know all of this one, right? The another one is sud, which means to sit. That's cognate. Uh, so the stem here we would expect to be sada, but it's actually not. Instead, it's sida. Sa sidati, he sits. Te sidanti, they sit. Tuam si the si, you sit. Aham si dami, I sit. There are a couple more uh, very common class one verbs that you should be careful about. One is the super common verb, sta. Sta, which means to stand or stay. This uh, turns into the stem tishta. So we get stat tishtati, it's standing. Or te tishtanti, they are standing. Or tuam tishtasi, you are standing. Aham tishtami, I am standing. Uh, so, finally, there's a, um, another important root, pa, which means to drink. Uh, there's an irregular stem for pa, and it's piba. So the, uh, it'll become pibati, saha pibati, he's drinking, sa pibati, she's drinking, te pibanti, they drink, aham pibami, I drink. So that's it for now. Uh, if you check out the website, uh, ubcsanskrit.ca, you're going to find a few other examples that we've been uh, that we've given in both Parasmaipada and Atmanipada declensions to let you practice them. You can see how the root first turns into a stem and then gets the ed endings added on to it. The key again to remember that A, you have to gunate the root, B, you add your class marker a gara, and then that's then you add your endings. So let's stop here, we'll take a break, and then when we come back, we'll look at the next of our Agana classes, class 4, which is known as the Divgana. So thank you for watching, see you next time. Punar Milamaha, Vadaha.